Captain America Civil War, the Avengers split into two teams between Team Cap and Team Iron Man over the Sokovia Accords. And they have very disagreeing and opposing views, and these end up leading to arguments and even fights between the Avengers. And unfortunately, something like that is happening within Christianity today in the deconstruction movement. And one of the biggest voices against the deconstruction movement is John Cooper of Skillet. I've talked about him on this channel a couple times before. We're going to do it again today. But what I want to get into is what deconstruction actually is, how we as Christians should approach it, and how we can look at this through the lens of Captain America's Civil War. That's what we're going to talk about today on Cinema Sermons. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Cinema Sermons. I'm Kevin, and if you love movies and love Jesus, you're in the right spot. And if you love movies but you don't love Jesus, please stick around. I hope you hear something that encourages you. So as I said, we're in a position right now where we have two different opposing views and something that's on the rise, this deconstruction movement within Christianity. And one of the people that's speaking out against it the most that I listen to is John Cooper of Skillet and his Cooper Stuff podcast. And... I just think that we as Christians need to acknowledge this topic. It'd be nice to just kind of ignore it, but that's how we got to where we're at. So in this video, and of course using the movie Captain America Civil War, we're going to go ahead and look at four different things. Alright, so the first thing that I want to get out of the way is one of the things that leads people down this path of deconstruction is church hurt. They have been hurt by the church. They have experienced pain. They have experienced hypocrisy, physical abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse. Or they'll see people who are preaching one thing and doing another. Or they've grown up in a very strict household where they're not allowed to watch a certain movie or listen to certain music. But then their family members and their parents even are not living a godly life. So they begin to think, well, if you guys don't even believe this, why should I? How do I know this is truth if they're not seeing that? So what I want to say to anyone who's experienced church hurt, which I have as well. First of all, I'm sorry that that happened to you. I really am. I know I hurt you, Tony. And I'm sorry. That is not how things are supposed to go. And I truly, from my heart, am, am sorry and wish I could take that pain away of any hypocrisy or abuse that you may have suffered within the church. But on the flip side of that, instead of disproving the Word of God, I feel like it proves it even a little more because we are all sinners. Every single one of us, the pastor on the pulpit, the leaders in the church, the deacons, the elders, every single one of us is a sinful, fallen person. The Bible says that all have fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says that none is righteous. We are all saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. And that's why we put our faith in Him and not in other people or in church leaders. But I really am sorry if you've experienced church hurt. The second thing that I want to talk about is we have had a lot of doctrines creep into the church and people will build an entire theology off of things that are either a Bible verse taken out of context or something that's not in the Bible at all. And that is dangerous because when people get out into the world and they break away from this church culture and they see things in the world and they're like, yeah, that's weird. I don't like that. That's a little strange. And it's not even in the Bible. So they get out into the world and the world has got its plenty of own temptations. Things that the Bible very clearly says are not okay and is sin is fun enough and it's tempting enough. So we as Christians need to make sure that we are not inputting and imparting any doctrines that are not in Scripture. The third thing that I want to talk about is that we as Christians need to stand true on the authority of Scripture. It is true. Now, a lot of people who are deconstructing, they'll see things, and it conflicts with our culture, and they'll be like, you know what, I don't really like that. I don't think God has a problem with that, because I know plenty of people who are living that way that you say is sinful, and I just don't think God has a problem with it. Or maybe that was okay for that time, but not now. No. What the Bible says is right is right, and what the Bible says is wrong is wrong. Now, we have to understand that we are not under the Old Covenant. We are under the New Covenant. We are no longer under the law, but under grace. But Jesus did not come to abolish the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. The law is not bad, but the law was given to us to show us how sinful that we were. But we are not under the law anymore. We are under grace. So I wanted to say that that we need to make sure we are biblically literate as Christians. And the fourth thing that I want to say as Christians, and we, if we want to stop people from deconstructing and from leaving the faith, we need to be genuine. And we need to be genuine in our walk with Christ, that we are trying to live it out every single day. But we also need to be genuine in owning our mistakes. When you sin, when you fail, own it. Say, I did that. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Don't try to sweep it under the rug and pretend like, well, they can't know that the youth leader Kevin ever messed up. Now, I'm not saying tell everything, right? I'm not saying, you know, let everyone see your dirty laundry. But I have men in my life that hold me accountable when I sin. And I have people that are accountable to me 
when when they send, you know, some some of the people that I serve in the youth group, they're like, hey, Mr. Kevin, I'm really struggling in this area. And we need to make sure that we are living authentic lives, that we are not putting on a show or a farce because people can see right through that. All right, so how does this apply to our lives in the text of Captain America Civil War? So with those things that I've said, and I know people have experienced church hurt, but the fact of the matter is, is whether you've experienced church hurt, whether you have doubts, which if you do have doubts, I highly encourage you to seek godly counsel and seek wisdom. It's okay to have doubts, it's okay to have questions, but seek godly wisdom because scripture cannot contradict itself. There are very more than likely answers to your questions. But anyway, I digress. We need to stand on the truth of scripture. And as we're seeing with John Cooper, he's catching a ton of heat because he said this. I don't hate those people who are Christians. I pray for their repentance, but listen, they have divorced themselves from God and they want to take as many of you people as they can. And it is time for us and your generation to declare war on this idolatrous, deconstructed Christian movement. People are very mad at John Cooper and they are coming after him, but it's the truth. It's the facts. It's the truth of scripture. We cannot compromise. And she said compromise where you can, but where you can't, don't. Bible says to put to death your selfish ways. Jesus said, if anyone wants to be my disciple, he must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. Christianity is about denying yourself. So whether you read a scripture and you're like, well, I don't think that's what that means. And I don't know how I feel about that. And I believe in the lovey Jesus and the happy Jesus and kind of this hippie Jesus who is, is all love and no repentance. That's just not the truth of scripture. And it's going to cause conflict, just like Captain America Civil War. And we need to, we need to stand up for that. Just like when Cap tells Tony. If I see a situation pointed south, I can't ignore it. Sometimes I wish I could. When we see a situation pointed south, we can't ignore it. We have to acknowledge that this is dangerous. It is going to creep in. It is going to lead people to hell. Because if you are believing a gospel that is contrary to the word of God, and th th it's, it's, not, it's not true. It's just not true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. Christianity is very exclusive. It is. Jesus is the only way. He doesn't share his reign with other gods. God is a jealous God. And he said the first commandment in the Old Testament is you will have no other gods before me. And we need to acknowledge that standing for this truth, standing for biblical truth is going to cause conflict. It's going to cause fighting and you're going to catch a lot of heat and flack for it. But we need to stand firm. And I don't think we need to be rude. I think we can be kind and courteous, just like when Cap tells Tony at the end of the movie. I wish we agreed on the accords. I really do. I know you're doing what you believe in, and that's all any of us can do. That's all any of us should. I wish we agreed on this. I really do. I don't hate you. I'm not mad at you. But we can't compromise on the truth of scripture. In Captain America Civil War, when the two teams of Avengers are fighting each other, they really believe that they're doing the right thing. Captain Rogers, I know you believe what you're doing is right. Tony really believes that they need to be put in check. And Cap really believes that the individual should have the right to choose. That the Avengers are the ones best equipped to handle any issues or any problems that come up. Cap is distrusting of governments while Iron Man wants any kind of oversight to be had. We need to be put in check. Whatever form that takes, I'm game. There are two really good people, two bona fide heroes, who really believe that they're doing the right thing, and that's what causes conflict. And a lot of times in this deconstructionist movement, though sometimes it is people who just want to sin, who don't want the conviction and don't want the condemnation and just want to get away with whatever they want to get away with and live their own lifestyle, a lot of times it is people who do, who are doing what they believe is right. We have a culture that tells you that what you feel is almost the ultimate truth. If you feel something is right, then it must be right. If you feel like something is good, then it must be good. Live out your truth, live out your identity and all these other things. That's why we need to be rooted in the truth of scripture because it doesn't change. Because we live in a society where something that was frowned upon five years ago is completely celebrated now or something that is celebrated now won't be okay later. And I'm not saying that there are certain, there are absolutely certain things that are not okay and that have happened throughout history. And that's why we need the Bible to tell us what's right and wrong because even the Bible is saying that those horrible things and horrible atrocities that occurred were wrong then. That is why we need the truth and the authority of the scriptures. And like I said, I don't think we need to condemn people and beat them down because most of these people really just feel like they're doing the right thing. 
but the Bible is what decides what's right. The truth of Scripture is what tells us what is right and wrong. So my friends, in closing, I want to say that if you are someone who is deconstructing and you have any thoughts or questions or doubts about your faith, please reach out to somebody. You can reach out to me on my Instagram or in the comments down here. Let me know any questions you have and we will go ahead and try to work with you because I do believe that scripture is truth. I do believe that scripture cannot contradict itself and I want to help you. And if you've experienced any church hurt, I'm so sorry. And that's not how we are actually supposed to live. We are supposed to be set apart. However, we are just people, and that's why I think it's important for us to live genuinely and to be authentic. But we do need to stand on the truth of the scriptures. And if you are someone who is standing for truth, like John Cooper, I just saw him the other day. Uh, check this shirt out. Jesus is Lord, skillet, yeah. Um, I just saw him the other day, and on stage, John is talking about how he's tired. He's burnt out from these comments and all the people who are giving him hate. So if you are standing for truth and it's getting heavy, understand, we just read that the the Apostle Paul tells us we're going to be persecuted for our faith, but we need to stand strong because his grace is sufficient for us. So stand in the truth of the scriptures of the word of God because it is ultimate authority. It is truth. So my friends, that's all I have for you today. I know it's not the happiest message and I know it's not the most encouraging message, but it is the truth of the word of God. We need to stand on it even when it causes conflict. Not if, when it causes conflict. We need to stand true on the word of God and we need to raise up people. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I believe that there's a lot of people out there like you and me who want to do the same thing. So I love you. Jesus loves you. That's our story. We're sticking to it. See you guys. Even if the whole world is telling you to move, it is your duty to plant yourself like a tree. Look them in the eye and say no. You move.